uh, Florence, thank you so much. So you've got this this image of journey and also of context, the surrounding context around you. Um, somebody, so Tom has written, we had, <laughs> we had sharks, empty screens, crushed brains, dashed ideas, some were waving, not drowning. Ah, just to clarify, they were waving, not drowning. So, um, and Emma has said, please do tweet. I probably won't tweet as we're going, I might take some screenshots because otherwise it's really distracting. Uh, themes, Sean says, themes of positivity and purpose in the group. So I wondered if I could be cheeky enough, it uh, depends on your background as well, would you be able to just show us your drawing, if you're happy to, on screen, and then we'll just take a screen capture, just to get the feel of it. So it's just picking up your drawing and holding it in front of your head. Oh, we already did that, sorry. <laughs> No, that's fine. I've missed it. Did you record it? Is it? Uh, yes, I took a screenshot, but so you perfect. Can see them. Perfect. I'm glad you did. And here's me trying to think. How do I do screenshots on Max? Can't remember. Uh, oh yes. Thank you. Done. Lovely. Thank you for that. I'm going to tweet that later. Brilliant. So I'm going to go. I'm going to jump into um, a presentation. Um, I'm, um, I was just thinking, I might have to think about which, what things I can share, or I might have to do an edited thing, because I've just, I've got lots of screenshots on there. So, we may do some drawing, we may not, we'll keep an eye on the chat, and um, I'd like it to be, I, I haven't made it as interactive as I would normally do, because of our numbers, but I think we could probably do a little bit. So let me let me give you uh, some of the ideas that I've got. Um, just to say, if you've, you've been in for half an hour, sorry I couldn't join you earlier on. I was doing a session th with the with a crowd called the Thinking Through Drawing crowd. They've got their big symposium this week, and so I did one on drawing yoga, which finished at quarter past twelve, and then people were just chatting afterwards. So um, and that was about drawing around us with our arms, invisible drawings, and drawing into the sand because I live by the beach. So it's a new experimental thing. Um, yes, if anybody wants to make visual notes, that'd be wonderful that we can add onto the blog. Um, and I'm going to do a short write up, so you'll have. I don't know if it's the same with you, but sometimes I go to presentations, I get really excited, and then I'm not quite sure how to connect the slides up with the, you know, the narrative. So I'll do a, a, a write up for Chrissy on that. Wonderful. Okay, let's go to a share screen. Talk amongst yourselves for a second while I get the uh, the right thing up and. Um, Chrissy, anything to share or anybody else? Just realised I have to press a certain button that I hadn't pressed. You mean you need some entertainment? Before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if somebody could do a song about drawing, well, heads, I, knees, toes. Well, we have some Sean there in the middle, I see him in the middle of my screen, he's our musician, but we have loads of multi-talents here oh, in the session, thing. so but a, a moment of silence is also valuable, you know. I we know, don't need to fill every every single moment. So just <laughs> enjoy, just enjoy. And you are so so kind. So I had to sorry set this up as a as a separate thing so I could see both uh, as a anyway a window. I've done it now, so that should be fine, and I should be able to share that. Yes, yeah, sorry. So if you've been sort of sitting and you want to stand and stretch and move around, please do, because this is something I'm particularly concerned about. Our backs, really. We'll see why. So at the minute, you should see a screen that says Drawing for Learning with my little book capture at the bottom. Um, Ah, oh, flipping it. This might be on automatic. Never mind. Drawing for Learning. So I've just uh, got a book out. Oh, I hope this isn't automated. So um, my relationship with drawing. So I trained as a medical doctor. So at the age of 18, off I went to med school without yeah, really knowing what that meant. Um, and I did a pharmacology degree as well. Now, there was actually a lot of drawing in med school, but 
if you'd said to me, oh, do you draw? I'd say, don't be silly. Of course we don't draw, we do medicine. Um, so, and, and the literature says the same thing, that, that people, health professionals draw quite a lot. That's my main area. But we don't realize that we draw and and i'm wondering if you'll think that as well so have a think um there are a couple of prompts on here have a think about your own kind of working practice do you draw don't tell us yet um we'll come back to that um and then after i've done some of the slides have a think oh do i draw now now she said what's drawing is oh i probably do draw so i trained as a medical doctor i um have a pharmacology degree as well. I then, uh, in while I was doctoring, I had a uh, I had students as you, you tend to find your students. I love teaching them, and so I switched into teaching. So I went into higher education. So I've done fifteen years teaching health professional students from nine different pathways. What that means is I had students who were training to be adult nurses, occupational therapists. Um, as well as people, um, so midwives, radiographers, so as well as people who were already health professionals and coming in to get uh, to, for CPD um, at degree or master's level. So, for example, to get a qualification in prescribing, what's called non-medical prescribing now called independent or supplementary prescribing. So that was my profile for uh, 15 years. While I did that, um, I got really interested in education through my PG cert in education and then that's the trajectory I've carried on. So I did a master's and that was in Southampton on innovative practice and that's where I got interested theoretically in drawing. Um, I then had the opportunity or there was an opportunity which I went for which was a, a PhD. It was a funded PhD on drawing for health professional education. So I'm guessing most people have PhDs here but if you're interested in 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 PhDs and there are funded ones about, there are some really interesting ones. If you want to have a chat about that, then, then I'm happy to do so. So I wrote a proposal, um, like all good PhDs, my, my end product wasn't quite the thing I started with, but that's what research does. Um, and then I moved to the beach uh, four years ago and I worked at Bournemouth University and there I led the masters in education. So I was essentially in the teaching and learning unit there. So alongside this, I used to paint when I was younger. Um, actually, no, I didn't really paint. I did, I did drawings. Um, and as is quite classic when you look into um, uh, anecdotal literature, uh, people, children tend to stop around 10 to 12 years old, sometimes at eight. So I stopped drawing at 12. I didn't, I didn't do any more art, um, apart from an art class, an evening art class that I did when I was 16, um, which I didn't really like, that was painting. Um, since I've been doing my PhD, the art side of things has, has uh, increased hugely. Um, while I was in higher education, so well, all of my working life, um, I was also coaching people. And this is where lots of different threads have come together, because in coaching, you're dealing with difficult topics. Within health, you're dealing with difficult topics, things people don't want to talk about. So it's either taboo or it's things like, right, we're going to talk about um, euthanasia. And people are like, oh, you've also got different cultural mixes, different attitudes. And what I was finding was um, less so with coaching, because coaching you're one on one. So you're able to be a bit more uh, honest, maybe, about the tough things. But within health, where we had to deal with these tough questions of disability, what do you think this might be like for the family? What is it like for you? Have you got somebody in your family with a learning um, with learning needs or actually learning difficulties? What, have you got it? What is that like? People didn't want to talk. They didn't feel safe. And so I found drawing was a way to where people talked about things or even just discovered things about themselves through drawing. So the research was the main thing. So that was PhD research in drawing. And so now I'm a facilitator. Uh, academic coach. Um, I, I don't really know the words to use, but I've, I'm using the words education consultant and coach. If anybody can think of better ones, let me know. So, um, and all of that had a little bit of drawing. Most of the time I didn't acknowledge it, apart from the art. Um, but I draw diagrams. Um, so now I, I'm more explicit. I understand the drawing I did. So here is Bloom's taxonomy. 
Um, Bloom's taxonomy as was on the left, Bloom's taxonomy as is now, um, and you'll notice the difference is the top levels or the top two levels have swapped. Now, this is, most of you will know this. If you don't know this, it's absolutely fine. It's essentially to say what we do in higher education, whether we explicitly understand that, is our learning outcomes is, are still built on Bloom's taxonomy. So we use verbs about knowledge in year one, uh, list things, describe things, uh, explain things. And as we go into year two and three and then masters, we push up the pyramid. So by the time you're at PhD, it's about creating new knowledge. Those students that are writing and able to work at the creating stage, they're doing something innovative, they've looked at the research, they've evaluated, they've analysed, they will tend to get higher marks. And one of the things that I found really interesting when looking at learning outcomes, say with colleagues, is if we, if we keep things at level four, students, we, we need to take some responsibility out of our learning outcomes because if we're not writing them so that somebody can create, they probably won't get the higher marks. I don't want to talk too much about that, but it's a nice link um, to uh, people in, in education. So um, could you let me know just in the chat, we might take some discussions. So what different skills are needed to learn your subject or disciplines? Now that's a really broad thing. I've come off drawing at the minute, just so we should have just a whirl of stuff. So what different skills do you need to learn your subject? So um, let me give you some examples, do chat away, um, and then we'll scan through. If you're not quite sure what I mean, let me give you some examples. So in the PG cert education that I led, I needed people to um, understand how to learn to, to write learning outcomes. I needed them to appreciate curriculum design principles, for example. Um, I needed them to um, Um, well, perhaps it wasn't explicitly said, but be excited about their subject. How do they take something that they've spent so long in immersed in and make it understandable, make it into material that is engaging for students? How do they um, um, weave in assessment? How do they scaffold? They're writing so those are things from my pg set so we've got some others do do have a look i'll just um <clears throat> so critical concept problem solving reimagining creativity risk taking i wonder if so tom's got creativity risk taking self-belief bravely bravery being with which i would say are quite unusual i think we all need it but i don't know if we explicitly state it in our work Manual dexterity, academic development, information literacies, reflection, digital reflections, uh, discerning oblique connections between narrative elements along with literary form, social context. This is really useful for me because it, it gives me a feel of who's in the room as well. So some of the skills, I love this. So Emma's things is kind of skills in quote marks because actually are these skills, can these be learned? Can the, are these innate character attributes? Are they, where do these things come from? Earth and planetary science, oh, so exciting. Um, observation is key, observation, observation. So need to step back from applying knowledge or labeling, learning to read the outcrop data. Okay, so that's really helpful. So some of us, and I would say most, I can't, I can't do a sweeping statement. Sometimes you want people to have knowledge but actually not bring that, so the knowledge is not at the fore, it's the observation, and then you apply the knowledge to what you're observing. Self-awareness, lifelong learning, sketchbook method. Ooh, I want to hear more about that. Okay, so keep, keep scanning, that's fine. Uh, keep writing if you'd like to. Um, so I, I want to challenge you to think about, well, where could drawing fit in with this? I am not saying everything needs to be drawn. I don't do everything through drawing. But have a think where drawing would improve the communication of your subject area with others. Okay, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. If you want to keep typing, you're very welcome. 
So, I can't have everything in front of me, how interesting. Oh yes, that way I can, right. So, um, this is the World Economic Forum. Now this is an updated thing. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this was during COVID and they they updated it to say after COVID, this is what we think. So the future of work is all about lifelong learning. Um, I've put up data of a pre-read, sorry, that's a slide from another presentation. So where they, they have the document to read, I didn't want to um, throw things at you. The top 10 life skills necessary for the future workforce post COVID. It's not much different to what was there pre-COVID, but the, the, the top ones are so active learning, learning strategies, complex problem thinking. Th th there's nothing uh, like major here. But what they're saying is our whoever we are training up, whether vocational or not, we are training up people and this is what the workplace needs. So it's World Economic Forum is amazingly readable. So I, I, I like them. So hopefully not too much of a surprise. We probably do that in some some area. Now, right at the bottom, we've got self management skills, and that's probably what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm really intrigued with working with co as as a coach one on one, working at, with peer coaches, so with PhD students, and working with. Um, I've just finished a consultancy on resilience. Let me know if you want a, a resilience um, training thing. So I am um, online and physical face to face. So. That's a newer thing for me, resilience, stress tolerance and flexibility. And that is something we've all had to learn, really, uh, the hard way, I would say. So um, back to drawing, what intrigued me about drawing? I'm going to give you some time to read this and I'm just going to scan the chat while, while you do that. Um, just to say, most of these slides are, are not text heavy, they're image heavy, as you would expect. Okay, would love to comment on all the comments, um, but we will be here longer than the time that you've got. So here are two quotes. Obviously, there was lots that intrigued me. This is this was in my reading in the first couple of years, um, and I, when I told people I was, people that know me as a medic or as an educator, when I said oh, I'm doing a PhD on drawing, they were like, oh, I went two two reactions. Children went, oh, great. <laughs> Adults went. Um, some colleagues, academic-wise, went, oh, tell me more, that sounds really interesting. Most colleagues, I'd say, didn't. And that's fine. Because I've been doing creative practices for a while, I'm quite used to that. So I am used to people saying, oh, Curie, great, collage. Are we in preschool? And I'm like, yes, come along. Um, oh, you've got crayons. Oh, I thought I was at university. So I'm quite used to that, that edgy uh, phrase. <clears throat> because drawing had um, a really crucial purpose for me. It was about thinking. It was about cognition. It was, as Deanna Petherbridge says, drawing needs to be reaffirmed as intelligent practice, um, which is as much about thinking, seeing and interrogating as inventing, and which communicates as intensely with others as it refers to the affective self. So it's much more, um, you can bring in subjective elements. And I would say that's true even in the academic realm so the examples i gave you of talking about taboo subjects people found it difficult to talk about disability about um, um, down syndrome about euthanasia because it's very emotive the other idea was from terry rosenberg and um, he calls it ideational drawing so he uh, so he is an architect Ideational drawing is a process and always in process. It's thinking and action and action as thinking. So it is uh, ideational drawing as process and as artifact is a thinking space. It is not a space in which thought is represented, but rather a space where thinking is present. So I really like the drawing activity you've done, but you've been given a prompt and you probably thought, well, what is it like? And something would have come to mind and then you drew it. That is um, thinking of something and then drawing a representation 
whereas more of my work is is the opposite way round is just to say well just just free form draw see what happens and then the thinking comes in amongst the time both are drawing both are valid so this is my catchy titled uh, PhD on the right um, and I wanted this much more free drawing not representational of something um, but just for the PhD, I wanted to think about intuitive, in the moment, free from drawing. If if you know about kind of the difference between dance and movement, it was much more about movement. So dance, right, this is a dance, this is how you do the steps. That's representational, you're copying something. Whereas free form movement is just move your arms, move, okay, just whatever. So that's the sort of drawing type that I did. Um, I won't read all of it, but essentially it was where it wasn't, it was much less about factual uh, factual information. So I've called it non-propositional thinking. Um, you are welcome to take screenshots if you want to. That's absolutely fine. You're welcome to tweet if you want to. Um, uh, in fact, I'd love it. Um, and of course, we'll make this available to you. So my PhD, which so I finished in tw uh, 2018. <clears throat> my PhD uh, was called the drawing program or what I did if you're interested in drawing as a methodology um, so much more as a research methodology so what I did is I present I developed something that was a drawing methodology for research rather than drawing as a method um, I've done an interview about it and there's um, um, some information on method space so if you go to the method space <clears throat> on Sage and just pop in my name it'll come up. So uh, and I also did a public engagement thing so there's different access points. Have a look and just just tune into kind of your response to these three images. I've said it's drawing. I'm not going to ask anybody to share. So on the left is, uh, is uh, all the drawings or rather there are photographs of all the drawings because they were much bigger. And these drawings uh, were done over several weeks. So this first image was I placed all the drawings and I asked people to pick their own, which was fine. It was, a, it was just a, a quick sorting method. The second picture is, is so you can get a sense of it was messy. It was intuitive. It kind of just made marks. It wasn't a picture of anything. The third picture was um, uh, one that had been developed over a session, so over 40 minutes and people could do other things and this was much more again intuitive drawing and the prompt about this was about aging the whole thing was about aging getting older this is one person's um, drawing and then she talked us through it so these were emergent they just happened on the page one mark led to another she didn't know what was happening there's very little that you can probably discern from this as a viewer as an audience member so the drawing isn't done for an, some, it's not audience, it's not for an audience, it's for the person. So that's the process drawings. <clears throat> this is a good sense of, um, of the connection of embodiment. So this embodied process of drawing, this connectiveness between, certainly with ageing, past, present, future. There were so many overlaps, so many layers, if you like. And Amelia, and that's her pseudonym, Amelia was a health professional student. Um, there were health professional students and people over 60 in the local area that came together to think about their future ageing through drawing. And Amelia says, I used more of my senses than the sort of logical conscious level every time I was drawing. And she did loads of gestures, so gesture was important and I call those drawing in the air. So she said, I, I did all these sorts of, more of my senses. Um, and because of that, I became more creative, more open. And very often, I did, not know, I did not know what the final effect would be and what the final product would be. I have no idea because we did not have much time to overthinking or overthink. Um, and I've left what she said in. She's uh, not a native English speaker. So I started to use the colours to express my feelings, which I hadn't done before. And, and I combined my feelings with the drawing or the other way around. So I quite like that sort of rich kind of interplay so on the page they're making marks they're not quite sure they've not formed an idea of the picture they want 
and then they I ask them to take the pictures and reflect on them put them up somewhere and send me reflections over the next uh, over a period of three months so and then you've got actually I'll do it that way <clears throat> And then you've got two quotes that might explain the work because of course when you finish a PhD when you come to the end of it you have to make sense of your, <laughs> of your stuff and I found I was I had very little in the higher education literature that I could hold on to and if you do let me know I love this that that made sense to me um, or sorry that said the same sort of thing so for me this is about learning about your own attitudes towards aging in, in this in this exploratory way I found two quotes that I thought ah oh, that's what's happening in my work so because because the people were saying oh well the drawing talked to me the drawing told me what you know I, I knew what the next color was um, and Elliot Eisner who is in education but much more in children's education and so this is from heart the Harvard zero project the Harvard zero team and he says the work itself secures its own voice. Now he was actually talking about art, um, so uh, within the realm of art discipline or disciplines to do with art. So the work itself secures its own voice. It helps set the direction. The maker is guided and in fact at times surrenders to the demands of the emerging forms. The act of representation is not me merely a monologue, monologue made manifest through the obedient responses of the material but the material itself speaks and creates new possibilities and that's what what participants were telling me was happening I struggled to find it easily said in education literature um, Stuart Hall <clears throat> writes about image um, and he just says the symbolic power of the image to signify is in no sense restricted to the conscious level and cannot always be easily expressed in words uh, and then he, he carries on and that's because people were writing drawing and and then well they'd, they'd put it up so they'd say oh, I've, I've used a picture of a tiger I've no idea why and then three months later they say I know why I've got the tiger there now it's told me and I was like okay loved it so some of that some of the findings from PhD are in um, my book which I'll put a link in later that comes out this week um, so if you want to start somewhere you could start with doodling mm, no that's not going to play so doodling was shown recently to improve memory in both young people and older people so they were given sort of nonsense bits of information and asked to doodle and those that doodled did better in, rec in recollection it wasn't nonsense they were like being a call center person so they were taking quite dull information and they did better so um now you've you've already done you've already done an activity so i'm gonna i'm gonna move off this one um i'm gonna pause there i want to take you through different different ways drawing can be used for learning but let me pause there and just see if there's anything anybody wants to say at this stage um, I, I suppose I've made the point that actually have a think how drawing can help your subject but actually you may do drawing already which is fine um, there's no kind of it's it's just it's just a case of saying oh these are all the ways that you could use drawing um, so does anybody want to share anything if you could put your electronic hand up that'd be great there's no need to but any thoughts that anybody wants to share Can I ask you something, Curie? Yes. I mean, it has been fascinating so far. Thank you. And I'm <laughs> like many others. I'm I'm doodling yeah. away. <laughs> oh, but I uh, I, I, I'm interested in what if there is rejection, you know, if people refuse to engage in that way, because I mean, many of us do a lot in learning through making, for example, and you ask people, you know, to create models and they find that often childish. Um, but I think there's a difference between making models and drawing because with drawing, what I have seen and heard uh, often um, coll uh, colleagues and students are saying, I can't draw, I can't draw. So how do you respond to that? What do you say? Wonderful question. That is, that is, that is 
kind of I was going to say the best question. It's not the best question, but it is one that if you get yourself all set up and then a whole group of 40 people say, well, I didn't come here to do this. I can't draw or whatever, then, then you get stuck. So what can you do? So um, being aware that that is going to happen, especially with adults, is probably the first thing. So just don't be surprised. So that, that's absolutely fine. So some of the things I would say to people are um, if you think you can't draw, don't worry, this is for you. Or I actually get them drawing, but I don't call it drawing already. So I'll say to them, oh, um, oh, this building's really hard to find, isn't it? How did you get to this room? Just draw, draw a little map and then they've drawn a little map for each other. Or I'll say, oh, you've all come through different, you know, there's, I don't know, I'll do it fairly safely. I won't try and, you have to be careful not to expose where they live. But um, what, what types of transport did you use this morning? Or, um, and get them to draw something that, that actually people are fine drawing a bar graph. People are fine drawing lines. Um, or I'll get them to draw with their body. So I'll, in fact, if I do this with you, it's, it's not a scary one. If, if this is like where you're at, <laughs> where you're at in terms of how interested you are in the topic so if you could switch your cameras on um and say that is kind of oh i'm really interested this is i'm cautiously interested right so not you know you're all here but you might be like i'm just watching so cautiously interested just just want to see what's happening so if you put your arm up in front of you and just say where you are at. So obviously I'm at here because this is my thing, although I'm a bit scared because I'm with you guys and you're all very clever. OK, so there you are. There, people are drawing in the room because they're doing drawing a bar graph or they're drawing, you know, a, yeah, I suppose it could be a bar of where they're at and looking around the room. So sometimes I'll do it that way. And other times it depends who I've got is like with the PG Cert students, I said, look, you're, you're going to experience lots of new ways. Some of them will suit you and some of you won't, but we're exposing you to different techniques. So give it a go and see if it sits well with you. So perhaps my crowd was a bit easier because I made them do all sorts of things pre-COVID, you know, where they were like, oh, I don't think audience response systems are helpful, Curie. I don't think, you know, doing online teaching is helpful, Curie. I was like, yeah, well, we're going to teach you all those sorts of methods. Um, if you want a bit more, what I've done in the book is I've done a whole um, a whole section, quite a few pages, on overcoming obstacles to drawing. Now it is within the health professional practice, but the ideas are the same. Does that help, Chrissy? Um, um, Robert has his hand up, Robert Morgan. Oh, wonderful. Robert. Oh, I wonder why I can't see you. Thank you for that, Natalie. That's all right. Uh, I just wanted to share, uh, this might be a bit of a sidebar, but I'm a stage designer and mm. I, I teach students stage design and uh, a number of years ago, I had my students design a play about Alzheimer's and we went to an Alzheimer's day clinic and we saw the different types of artworks that all Alzheimer's patients do in the different phases of their, of their disease. Um, and it becomes more and more abstract as they're approaching stage four, I believe it is. Um, but it was fascinating to see art through a medical lens and and this is this is really helpful now I, actually you probably will know the answer to this question if i just put you on the spot was <laughs> it was it an art class was it a group within um a setting or were people drawing in their homes and then they gathered them i believe it well what we were there to do obviously was to study alzheimer's but um they uh, often collected the alzheimer's patients together to do activities to just keep their memory working and painting was one of them drawing from a, a coffee can different memories from their past was another one yes. um so uh but what they did show me uh we couldn't have access to the patients that were um, very advanced in their disease, but they showed me artwork from those patients. And you could see this is, uh, you know, um, um, Jane, uh, her artwork from first stage of Alzheimer's to the last stage, and it got more and more abstract and impressionist looking. It was, it was fascinating. Yeah. And somewhat and I, tragic. <laughs> it's, it is sad. And, and there's, there's, there's lots to say about that. So one of these things are kind of, oh, it's an activity, but actually I, I'm, and I think activity is really important, but I want to go a stage further. And actually, I would say with, with activity, it's still 
with Alzheimer's. It's a sort of, it's enabling or it's empowering or it gives a sense of agency to just say, you know, there's still stuff you can do. So let's just do it. And people and dance is similar or movement, conscious dance, where you, you're like, oh, and there is a freeing within that yeah, place. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Robert. Okay, let me jump back into the presentation. So, <clears throat> okay. So, um, could you give me a could you give me a wave if you can see? Yep, all right. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so I these are gonna I'm gonna go through these really rapidly. So this isn't a case of you trying to write them all down. There'll be a recording. Um, it's not in the book in this way because I haven't. The book is not about drawing for learning. Um, so um, this is a separate thing, but I'm sure I can write something up about it at some point. So here are some drawing for learnings. So drawing can be used for objectively representing. All right, so I'm actually going to shut up now. Just capture it because it's going to go automated. I've forgotten. And see which ones you might resonate with. This is one of my research pieces, as is this. Oh, I have written that one up. So all of those are my, my own drawings, those four. Uh, one area was the sort of drawing and COVID, so this is why this last block are together. So those are just some very quick ideas because I wanted to just skim through them. Um, so for some of you where you're dealing with objective um, information that actually, uh, or abstract concepts, drawing will help uh, bring that on the page, but also will help you kind of go, oh, well, hang on. Uh, do, do my students get this and getting them to draw their understanding and ask each other right I'm just gonna let you draw that and then share with the person next to you and then come back with any kind of gaps or when you're not sure um, and drawing is easier sometimes than explaining so from uh, Brighton University there was a big um, project um, and it was a learning and teaching subject network at Centre for Drawing so They've got, so sorry, this is Pauline Ridley. I have got a reference list. Pauline Ridley and Angela Rogers have done four booklets. This is the one for arts and humanities, which was my area, but um, they've got um, one for sciences, one for maths, etc. So it's the same ideas, but it's actually mapped uh, with pictures within the subject disciplines. So that's probably one of the most useful things. It's a very small pamphlet, uh, it's a PDF and it's freely accessible. So let me say that again. So these are drawing to learn pamphlets. There are four separate ones covering different disciplines um, and using images that are relevant for a discipline because they worked with um, educators in, in university. And the other team, this is on now. If you want to have a look through, then you can. Um, and this is why I was late to this session. So, or later than I wanted to be. So the thinking through drawing team are doing something called the unlocking, so rethinking through drawing. So that's much more about this process drawing. Um, and it goes um, through from, so we've got live workshops, 18th to the 22nd, I've done mine, and then um, a panel on Saturday. Um, and the link is there as well. And as I say, I might put these in the chat um, once I pull them off. 
Um, and then I thought there might be some other resources that you might like to have a look at. This was particularly, I've put the Creative HE blog in there as well. Um, so the second one is, is really interesting, Rich Pictures. Rich Pictures has been written about a lot in the, um, to do with systems thinking. So it, it, it's, it, it probably translates quite easily to the higher education um, environment. Um, the Open University has got open modules on that. So if you want to kind of get into that, you can. Um, the Big Draw campaign, the Big Draw um, are, a, um, are a charity and October it happens to be a drawing month. So my book coming out, is all nothing was planned, uh, but it's, it's fallen together beautifully. So they've got lots of things that happen through their work. And there is a drawing research network which comes out through Loughborough. Um, this is across disciplines. It's not. It's not. Um, it's interdisciplinary. So it's not just about higher education. Um, that's not to do with us. And so, thank you for that. So we've got a few minutes left. We've got a good chunk of time. Um, I don't know what you want to do now. Or rather, let me stop sharing. If there were some examples that you wanted to go through because it went fast, um, then we'll do that. Actually, no, my question to you now is, I started with, with do you draw in your subject areas? Um, do you draw in your work or for your work with education? Now you've seen some of the screen captures, are there particular things that you think, oh, hang on, I could do that with drawing? Now it would have to be an experiment to see how it goes. So if that's my question. So in the chat, what are the things that you could now try drawing with or to try to draw, to uh, introduce through drawing? How could you integrate drawing into your work? So if you want to pop it in the chat, then do. If you want to say, well, not, I'm not so sure, I, I'd have to think about it. That's also true. That's, you know, those are all valid responses because we're all at different, different levels um, here. If you already do drawing, so let me give some examples. Things I didn't know about. Choreography uses lots of drawings. In fact, they have entire schematics that are very precise that I, I can't read. Um, if you do music, well, music is a drawing, but it has more structure to it. It's much more of a language than the drawing I'm talking about. Um, who else? Archaeology. When they, when they do a dig, they draw the different layers. I didn't know that before. So yeah. So if anybody would like to chat and talk about how either they do drawing or what ideas have come up that you think I'm going to try this out, that would be really exciting. So do do your um, virtual hand and then we can do a shout out and Natalie can help me with the, with the hands. This is a bit like in the classroom, you know, where you get no response. You think, oh no, what's happened? Have I just been talking copy with Chrissy? <laughs> Should I go first, Natalie? Is there somebody else? Oh, there is. So there's yeah, Debbie, Debbie in the Beehive. What, what okay. a name. Okay, Debbie, go for it. <laughs> Hi. Um, absolutely fascinating, wonderful. My doctorate is uh, creativity and um, teaching and learning. Ah. Um, and I use a lot of different media, drawing being one of them, but my main um, reason for all of that was I'm a patchwork and quilter and use textiles. Mm -hmm. So I use textiles for critical thinking. Um, it's a nurse, I'm a nurse by background. So in the postgraduate, and actually one of my recent students is on the call, I've just spotted her. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry. <laughs> um, I use um, a lot of creative media, um, including drawing, uh, to get students to um, rethink and reimagine their, their discipline of nursing and what it means to them. Um, so absolutely no text is allowed in a lot of the activities. So any medium that, that uses anything other than words, which is their comfort zone, because it's for me, it's about moving them away from that comfortable environment of words. And that's very much what what um, um, I feel like kindred spirits here. <laughs> I'm so excited. So Debbie, could you give us, because I, I, I realise some of this is a bit in the abstract, so Debbie, could you give me a, a prompt? So you would say to a group of students, right, today we're going to, and then how do you, 
<laughs> okay, so uh, I mean, I, I, I use a lot of imagery. So one of the um, sessions, I had to flip everything onto remote last year as well. Um, and it'd be interesting to see Kerry's response actually to this, because Kerry did this with me last year on remote and we weren't in the classroom. Yeah, but yeah. we, um, I have one session in the classroom where I would, I have a, a packet of postcards. So they're either art, cartoons, photographs, symbols, all sorts of different types of images that I just throw on the floor and the students select and, and, and I'm asking them to think about what the, what what they what what their key attributes are they think that they think are important to to the profession of nursing um, and and then so they select a load of images and I, I, I get them to get down to at least at, at, at most half a dozen or less um, and then they give their reasons as to why they've selected the images and this is part of a development that goes through lots of other work like collage like the textiles like you know getting the brain working in a different way which is um the the, the key part of it towards them doing a storyboard as the assessment at the end of the module oh, which nice. is about their professional self and their journey um and so that's just one of the assessments there are there are three altogether but um in actual fact, I often don't give too much prompt because I don't want to steer. So and the, the one I use with textiles, I actually go in normally, Kerry missed out on this one. We had to sort of use whatever they had in their home, <laughs> old sheets and things, you know, whatever you've got. Um, and um, I usually have this big suit, a suitcase with all these scrap fabrics and bits and pieces in. And I'm, I'm usually emptying this stuff out as I'm waffling purposefully um, to um, to ask them to think about um, the sort of values in this and the professional self as well as 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 as, as uh, it's a different one to the imagery one it's it's all developing these concepts really through um, through the whole module um, and then at one point I always leave the room in that session in particular I always um, pretend I've forgotten something. I leave my scissors on my desk or something. And then I leave so that they can, because it, that, that connectedness you talked about, it's a really important part of any of this. It's those students are in that situation. It's a bit like the sewing bee, when, when you're all sharing an experience and, 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 and that's the key part of, of, of some of the students' journey as well, which was a challenge online. But um, I leave them in purposefully so that they can have the WTF moment of, of what? <laughs> What we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, so then, then I go. It's only about five minutes, ten minutes. Come back with the scissors, and by that time, every single time they're rummaging around, they're doing their, they're developing, and going back to the point someone said earlier about you know people say I don't draw. They all, they all often say I don't sew. So here's a glue stick. It's not about the craft. It's about the 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 the, the connection you, you're making with the, the thing that you've got in front of you, whether that be music, whether that be a collage of magazines, whether that be drawing with with whatever. I mean, I did a city and girls patchwork and quilting not not that long ago when I was sort of starting my doctorate actually, and um, and I sat there in a class once with a piece of A4 paper with I think there were. Um, 12 or, or so many squares on the page just just rectangle just just squares blocks on the page and in each of those I had to draw something yes, and, yes. and the first thing was was with a pencil and nothing else so I just had a pencil and I had to draw rage or something you know it was about emotion and I sat there staring at this bit of paper with my pencil and thinking oh my god and then I just sat and I said to myself you do this to your students all the time just think what is it you know, get get into the, the actual thing that, that you're doing and, and shut out everything else and that's what happened this morning when I did this it was about you know as I said to the group as I just come off my ethics form to come to this session and um and it was like so my head was like you know so I just literally completely forgot what was going on that I was even in a meeting um, and and got myself into that and that's what it does for the students in whatever method I use that that's what it does so anyway I've rambled quite a lot there actually so <laughs> but I think it I think it was such a useful ramble so okay. it wasn't a ramble at all so thank you for that and I won't <laughs> carry on the spot because that would be unfair <laughs> no that's fine Kerry can tell us if she wishes if she wishes yes thank you <laughs> but I think I think this is the thing that you sort of say I know it's really weird but our course is about thinking yeah but a lot of times especially in our sessions 
we don't let them do any thinking because it takes time and or we'll say okay could you feed back and they're like flip what is the right answer that yeah. you want me to say yeah and then here look what is where do I not look stupid or whatever so or, you know I, I don't want to be too honest because the 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 images I remember somebody saying we do this image collage and and it was about what are skills have you got mm. and we did collage and um, she put one about uh, there's a superman happened to be on this page and she talked about being a hero um but not you know just having to do these marvelous things but she said afterwards you know if, if you'd have asked me in words there's no way i could have told you some of the things i've told you yes it's that deep you know what i mean mm. yeah exactly but because we've all got a shared understanding of superhero you're like oh i get i get the feel of it so fabulous thank you for that debbie so um emma Oh no, Ke would you mind, Emma? I'm going to ask Kerry just because she is the student. <laughs> Kerry, what would you like? To <laughs> well, I'm going to say because it's been epiphany, really. Because I, <laughs> I mean, the like, fact I'm doing the same, a similar topic for my masters now, mm -hmm. my dissertation, mm -hmm. um, looking at creativity and my sort of a journey. But um, you talk about that Superman. I've introduced a session where we talk about superheroes ah. and come up with a design and a drawing. Somebody did a film. Um, and just said, just do whatever you want. I did another session um, and it was all about uh, th uh, children um, and anxiety in children. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm not a child nurse. So we said, how can we explain these things when we have no voice? And I took loads of crafty things in and paints and the students did so much. They and they talked a lot about their own experiences as children. And this, it was just like, oh my lot. And so I'm not, I'm hardly using any powerpoints and yeah. moving more towards a lot of the creative because it's just bringing out all these different um sort of thoughts and discussions but for yeah. me it's been fab yeah it, it actually helps people talk because they're like ah oh, mm -hmm. right i'm talking about a thing rather than looking at you in the face it's yeah. actually quite hard to do kind of or looking at 40 people um or perhaps we forget how hard it is mm -hmm. and but actually if i can go oh so i would i, I know i'm pushing it but because I've seen a couple of uh, things on the chat, I would say if you're using clay, I would still call that drawing. It's emergent. It comes out. But actually, it doesn't have to be drawing. It's just what I would call drawing because you're making marks or you're making a form. Mm -hmm. But it is 3D. Um, and so is a dance or movement. If you're getting people to move, to say, say how they feel, to make a sound about their, you know, we're talking about assessment. How are you feeling? Um, and then the other thing that's worked amazingly well is lego um amazingly so and actually doing the same thing leaving lego depending who you've got and then you leave them with a little i had little covid safe packets of lego tiny packets and uh, i didn't leave them but i said to them look look at what you're all doing this was with uh, art academics and what would this have been like if you were five years old and they were like, well, it would be chaos. We'd be stealing things. We'd... But their point was we'd get into it. We've been trained that we're in a classroom and now we have to do the right thing. What are we allowed to do? That goes back to Ken Robinson's thing, doesn't it, about uh, kill killing creativity. Uh, totally, totally. Mm -hmm. I have, um, so sorry if you think, oh, she hasn't talked about creativity. I've stayed, steered away from that word because it, there's lots and lots of assumptions about creativity. Um, and another thing is about because mine is much more about process the object itself might not be its creative approach but i wouldn't say that the object you make is a you know i've stayed away from creative and art because people have hang-ups so but so do they about drawing but I, that's that's why i've done that there was a colleague of mine once said oh yes that's your stuff and nonsense hooray Embody your stuff and nonsense. Wear it as a cloak around you. I do. I I I, I <laughs> flaunt it everywhere. <laughs> um, and Debbie, just to finish off that bit, have Sorry. you come across uh, Jenny Hall's work, who did quilt making, making a quilt? She's a midwife. Yes, I, I I did come across some of that, but um, but it, it, I had to focus down on the nursing in the end. But yeah, I did come across some um, so, plates as I well. I mean, she's. Did she do it as a midwife? She might have. Done, she's a nurse midwife, nurse change midwife. So it, if you want me to con um, to connect you, let me know. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Oh, that's great. So I've put in a lot of the uh, links. 
Um, Natalie, you are, if you could save the chat as well, because I haven't been able to keep up with it, which is fine. I've really enjoyed it and hopefully you've really enjoyed it as well. I just want to find the link for the book um, because as of this week, the first chapter is free or available free. Uh, you're looking for the book the um i'll put the recording online <clears throat> or rather emma on the blog once i've edited it and uploaded it and um i'll also share the chat um and all the all the links from the chat better and all the resources we put them together into something oh that'd be lovely that's the only thing with um yeah. right okay so the last thing that's popped up now hopefully is the free chapter so um but anyway if you look at emerald and chapter or follow me on twitter that's fine so we are finishing off now thank you for your time um i hope you've enjoyed it i am going to enjoy reading the chat thank you for giving up your time because time is so precious and um i hope it please keep in touch please do things on twitter put things on um but also if you you know want to keep in deeper touch then get get in touch with me through linkedin and uh will uh, be great right i'm not very good at endings so i'm gonna ask that we all can you unmute us all i know it'd be chaos but that we just say bye to each other i can only mute all yes or oh, ask all to unmute there we yes. go yes <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.